Hey guys, what's up and welcome to part one of a massive series where I release all my secrets on how to stream art on Twitch, everything I know about streaming. Before we get started, I'm actually recording this part after I've recorded everything else. And I just want to say I apologize if this video is a bit bare bones and a bit boring. Um, if you already have all this knowledge in your brain, how to set up before your first stream, feel free to skip it. But future videos after this tutorial wise are going to be a little bit more interesting and fancy. I just wanted to get this part out of the way so that in case someone has no background on how to do any of this, you're starting with something. Um, so please have fun and enjoy the video. And if you uh, have done all this before, I hope you learn something new today. I'm going to try and cover literally everything from setting up your first Twitch stream, which will be this video, all the way into making overlays, growing an audience, and connecting and collaborating with other art streamers. It's going to be a massive uh, series, unless you guys don't want to see it anymore, then I guess I'll just stop. But I'm going to try and just cover absolutely everything that I can. I have helped other people, other artists, start streaming on Twitch before, and I thought the best way to do it for everyone would just be to make a massive YouTube series, of course, <laughs> to cover everything that I know and show you guys my knowledge after streaming for basically, I think, four years now of, of art streaming on Twitch. So let's get started with that first part. First of all, if you're an artist and you just came to this video and you're like a bit confused, uh, why should you start? streaming art on Twitch. Well, let me tell you a little bit about just how easy it is to use Twitch as a platform to grow your art audience because it truly is any artist of any skill level is able to come to Twitch and grow a community and meet other artists and create a brand image. As an artist, you have so much freedom to do so many things at any skill level, traditional, digital, whatever, Twitch is a great place to grow your art and the community is amazing and I think it's very rewarding. Because of us being artists, our ability to make our own overlays, emotes, panels, etc. and all that good stuff makes Twitch into a very customizable experience. My Twitch stream has literally become my home online like it's where i go it's my own personal space uh, i call it my home because i have made everything here it's all done by me and as an artist it's something to be really really proud of and it's just great to just be able to stream your art and show other people your art here online if you've never watched an art stream before and you're an artist i totally recommend watching a few other people's streams before even considering art streaming on your own i think there's a lot of like um, etiquette and things to learn from watching other streamers before you start. But I'm assuming that if you're here now that you have some interest in it so you've probably seen some art streamers do what they do. I also just want to note, <laughs> this is kind of important, Twitch has a terms of service and I recommend reading over just all the guidelines in Twitch TOS. And remembering that as an artist, it doesn't matter that it's art, but nude drawings, naked characters, etc. No matter how much artistic liberty you have, um, it's not allowed on Twitch. You're going to get banned. So be careful when drawing booba on Twitch, please. Uh, be very careful. <laughs> Don't get banned. Artists have been banned before. So I warn you now, if you're a not safe for work artist, Twitch might not be the platform for you. So today I'm going to cover that first piece of how to get started here on Twitch. And you might already know how to do all this. If you do, just skip this video because I'm just going to teach you guys how to set up everything before you hit that live button for the first time. And I'm going to break this down into a step-by-step -step process. That way it's easy to follow. A lot of people, this is the part they need help with. Some people have already done this. If you've already done this, wait for the next video where I cover overlays and whatnot. But if this is literally your first introduction to Twitch art streaming, stick around for this video because I'm gonna cover 
all of it before you hit that live button. Make sure you're at an advantage here. So before we get into any of this, which is my Twitch channel as it is right now, I'm going to just lay down a quick list of gear that you're gonna need if you would like to start streaming art. The gear list is actually more simple than people think and you could start off with as cheap stuff as you want as long as you have a decent PC to stream. Um, I think that Twitch recommends a, um, what do they recommend? Let's see. Okay, yeah, Twitch recommends a PC of an Intel Core i5 or AMD equivalent and eight gigabytes of RAM. So if you have that or anything better, you're probably good to go. If you're on a laptop, don't worry. I streamed on a laptop for most of my time here. I literally just got this computer. So step one, have that decent PC ready. Step two, decent Wi-Fi as well as needed. I'm in a college dorm right now and the Wi-Fi is fine. So you probably don't need as good Wi-Fi as, you know, some of those crazy internet people on here, but decent Wi-Fi is good. You just wanna have Wi-Fi that won't be buffering all the time. If you're an artist, obviously you're gonna need your drawing tools of choice for Twitch streaming. I use a Wacom One drawing tablet, it has a screen. Uh, I've used my iPad in the past, which will probably be a separate video on how to stream on iPad. Um, I have also done traditional. If you are planning to do traditional art, make sure that you have a webcam or camera for overhead recording. Start out with like a cheaper camera if you can, you know, don't buy anything too expensive right off the bat. Uh, just a simple camera is pretty all right for that. If you are going with a camera, though if you have a you know one of those important cameras and not a usb webcam make sure that you buy the elgato cam link or something similar to capture your camera properly otherwise a usb camera webcam is perfectly fine for overhead and it's what i've been using I'm probably going to switch to a nice camera eventually but i mostly do digital now so we'll see uh, bonus points if you use a mouse to draw you're gonna need to buy a lot less stuff or not gonna need as much space on your desk. I mean, you're gonna have extra space on your desk to do other stuff. Uh, obviously, get a microphone. I have to say, uh, microphone is one of those things that people slack out on a lot. And in my opinion, the microphone is the most important piece of gear for your art stream no matter what people come to art streams for a soothing experience usually and your voice is going to play a very important role on what people think about your stream buy a decent mic right off the bat if you can't afford one go with a cheaper one but make sure that that first goal for what you're saving up for your twitch stream is a microphone this is a Blue Yeti. I don't know if you guys could see it. Um, it's a USB mic and it's actually getting a bit old. I'm going to be switching soon, hopefully, to a new mic. Uh, so <laughs> keep, keep upgrading your audio. I think audio is like one of the most important things for Twitch streaming by far. Additionally, I just want to say face cam is completely optional for Twitch streamers. I mean, Twitch art streamers. Gaming streamers, usually more often than not, I think people recommend that you have a face cam. But for the most part here with the art community on Twitch, especially for the digital drawing community, not as many people have face cams as you might assume. And a lot of the bigger art streamers here on Twitch just don't have one and never plan on have one, having one. And they are perfectly successful with that. So don't worry too much about the face cam. Um, if you're traditional, I think people might want to see your face a little bit more, but that's one of the things that you might not want to worry about right now. Obviously I use a face cam, but uh, I don't know why I use one. <laughs> I don't have to. If you're a VTuber, do that. <laughs> Obviously that's what's in right now, right? So let's get started with the nitty gritty here. Uh, what we're looking at right now is my Twitch page. And before you start streaming, I, in my personal opinion, it's important that you customize your page just a little bit. If you come over to your page, if you don't have an account, 
make an account, uh, set up that two-factor authentication with your password because Twitch has had leaks in the past and ugh, it's kind of problematic. Just make sure you have the two-factor on and you should be okay. Um, come over to customize channel and customize as much as you possibly can here. Your display name, your bio, I'm going to change mine soon, I think. Uh, for bio, just make sure that you write a simple thing about yourself. Say if I want to change mine right now and I want to say college animation student. Um, sorry about my keyboard is so loud. Trying their best <laughs> at parts. Keep it short and keep it simple. Just a little bit about yourself. Um, that's a great way to just get people knowing you a little bit before they watch you or while they're watching you. You don't want to leave that blank for your first stream, you know, because people are like, who is this? Uh, college animation student is like, that tells a lot about me. <laughs> uh, down here are socials. You could link your socials here. I think it's pretty useful to link them and uh, yeah, obviously link them if you have them. Uh, for Brand is probably the most important thing that you want to set up for customization at first. Uh, your brand image is super important here on Twitch, especially as an artist. How your stream looks and how you represent yourself is a big thing for artists here on Twitch. Uh, everyone does it differently. Everyone has their own style, even gamers. But as an artist, you're like expected, I guess, to have a sort of aesthetic going on. I'm currently going for this like vampire, gothic, uh, religious aesthetic, and I'm starting to lean more and more and more into it. So the first thing that I would do is upload a profile picture. If you don't have one, make one. If you're an artist, draw one, use some of your art. Uh, if a character, you have a character that represents you personally, like I have this vampire character that I use as a VTuber here and there, and I use this character to represent myself on the internet. That's the character that I use. Uh, pick a color. Color is pretty important here too. Make sure that you, <laughs> you're using color themes and color theory with your streams. I have this red and like dark grayish blue tones always happening. I think that the colors look good on Twitch and I think it reflects the aesthetic of not only my art but my energy. <laughs> so be mindful of what you choose. Uh, Twitch will generate a background for you but if you have some kind of profile banner to use I would definitely have one there. I don't have a video player banner. Oh, whoops. <laughs> So this is really, really important. Um, I'll talk about schedule and featured content probably in another video. So don't worry too much about that. Just get your first stream off the ground and then we'll talk about how important schedule is because guess what? It's very important. All right, so now that you've set up your profile on Twitch via the website, I'm going to recommend the, in my opinion, best software for streaming here on Twitch, and that is Streamlabs OBS. Throughout this series here on YouTube, I'm going to be calling it Streamlabs, I'm going to be calling it Slobs, I might just call it OBS because that is like the parent company for it. You come over here to streamlabs.com and you just give it a download. It's absolutely free. There are paid versions of it, but I've never used their prime version. I've just never needed to. Um, I think that as an artist, probably not going to need it and I'll teach you guys how to make a lot of the stuff that they offer with that uh, but go ahead and download Streamlabs and once you have it installed it's going to ask you to sign in through Twitch you're going to want to do that that way it'll stream straight to your channel and it's also going to ask you if you'd like to use any of their templates it's going to be like manual setup or automatic setup whatever um, I'm going to teach you guys how to do all of this from scratch, so don't worry if you decide to start from scratch. It'll also let you select your webcam and microphone. I'll also teach you guys how to do that if you skip that part. So just get this bad boy installed and get it launched and sign in, and I'll meet you guys over in Streamlabs. So welcome to Streamlabs. Your screen should look a little bit like this. You probably don't have all of these here. We're going to talk about these uh, later. And you should just have 
one thing that just says new scene and then it should be empty here. I've added the display capture just so that I could show you guys a little bit about how to set everything up. So, welcome to Slobs, as the people call it, Streamlabs OBS. And I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about how to set this bad boy up. And we're gonna start from settings, actually. I'm gonna go straight into settings here. And I'm just gonna quickly talk a little bit about how these work really with art streaming. Because when you're streaming art and you're setting up your output and your stream settings and whatnot, you are not really going to need to worry too much about how high quality your stream is. And that's because dropping a couple frames here and there really doesn't matter too, too much with drawing. When you're gaming on Twitch, it is super recognizable if you're not streaming in 4K and you don't have that perfect frame rate. But when you're drawing, it's a little bit different. First of all, I just would like to say that the settings that I currently have set are optimized perfectly for my PC. My PC is an AMD Ryzen 9. It has a 12 core processor and it has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Once again, Twitch recommends you have the Intel Core i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM and decent enough Wi-Fi. If you're a little bit unsure about your Wi-Fi, grab yourself an ethernet cable and hook up directly. But that's just how my PC is and your output settings are going to end up looking completely different than mine unless you have a similar computer. So because we are currently recording, I'm unable to edit any of this, but I will give you a quick review over what things are. Let me just make sure that my cursor is, yeah, my cursor's captured. Okay, so if you take a look at my cursor, I'm gonna go through all of these settings and, well, at least not all of them, but most of the ones that I think are most important. A lot of this stuff you're just not gonna wanna touch if you don't know what it is, and a lot of it I don't even know what it is but the settings that I played with to get the stream that I wanted are as follows. First of all, the first thing you're going to wanna look at is choosing an encoder, which is right here. You see where it says encoder? It should say it under output and you go to streaming and you go to encoder. Mine is currently set as NVENC, AKA hardware. And just a quick explanation on that. The two settings that you have here for encoders are Software X264 and NVENC. Software will use your CPU to encode video and NVENC uses your GPU. If you know a little bit about your computer, um, you're going to wanna pick which one is best for you. Or if you don't really know too much, you might wanna fiddle around with both and do some test streams. Um, pick whichever one works the best. Software encoder is the one I would try out first. Mine is set as this because I have a good GPU. Um, play around with both of them, give them both a try, and see what works the best. I think this point in learning how to stream on Twitch, the most important thing that you could do is just run a bunch of test streams and see uh, maybe I should change this setting. Maybe I want to lower the bitrate. Maybe I want to higher the bitrate. Rada, rada, rada. Speaking of bitrate, my bitrate is currently set as 2324. Um, I think as an art streamer, you're probably okay with like 3000 for the bitrate. Uh, people have preferences. This is just what I have mine set as. You can get away with a pretty low bitrate for art streaming. Obviously, my computer can handle quite a lot. I have a very expensive computer. Thus, it's capable of handling maybe more than a standard uh, computer is. So definitely bitrate and encoder are the ones that you wanna play with first. And the next thing you're going to want to do is check the preset and profile settings. When it comes to these like profile settings and whatnot, you're really just gonna wanna set it with how you think your PC is going to work. I have mine set to high. Uh, just just because that's what fits my computer the best. I, you know, I'm not the biggest like tech nerd, so I can't tell you what all this stuff means with the nitty gritty. I really just played with it a lot to figure out 
what I like the best, but high is just what fits my PC here. Uh, as well, if you're gonna come over to video, these are pretty important, <laughs> I'm gonna say. Well, I mean downscale filter and you could probably ignore that for a little bit, but when it comes to resolution, once again, pick what's the best for your PC. And I'm going to give you guys this serious hint here when it comes to resolution is always aim for the best resolution you can. Worry about frame rate second. That is just as an artist. When you're doing traditional art, it's a little bit different. Sometimes that less frame rate can get quite annoying. So try to keep an okay frame rate if you're doing traditional. But if you're just doing digital art, worry less about frame rate worry way more about resolution because you want your art to be viewed in HD while you're streaming. So right now I have mine set to the base resolution of 1080 and then I have mine output and scaled to 720. Uh, I actually recommend using these settings. I know that I have a beefier PC, but those are pretty decent settings. I would definitely set it as 1280 by 720 scaled to start with. Uh, my base here is at 1920 by 1080 and I would also use that at first. Uh, try not to mess too much with the base. I mean, that's really just how your computer is reading things. Your output and scaled resolution is what you might really need to play with. If your computer is a bit slower, you might want to lower it, but be careful with your frames. You want to make sure that when you're running these test streams, trying out all these different settings, that you're not losing too many frames and it's not looking too blurry, but at the same time, you wanna try to aim for HD with art. You want your art to be looked at in HD. The subject of what you're drawing is the most important part of your stream. So aim for as HD as possible. So this is just a like basic summary, a quick summary about how slobs works. I would not try to get too worked up and too caught up about how things are doing. Those test streams are super important. And before I get moving along, before I tell you guys to hit that live button, obviously we need to set up this because this should be black for you. It should look like black and you don't want that. You want it to look like nice and clear and you want stuff to be here. So you're in that first scene. And I'm going to show you guys just the bare minimum to set up the art stream because in the next video I'm going to be covering overlays and panels, which is where you're going to get that customization for your Twitch stream that you really want. So the first things that I'm going to teach you guys to do is first is connecting a microphone. If you, oh sorry, I need to be more specific about that, <laughs> acting like you guys know what all these buttons mean. If you come in here into sources, so you're under your scene, think of these as kind of like tree branches. These are the roots, this is the trunk, and these are the, no wait, no, 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 other way around, other way around. These are the roots, and this is the trunk, and these are the branches. Think about it like that. These all connect. Um, and you have different scenes for different things and different sources for different, you know, add-ons to those scenes, and then this is your mixer. So go into your scene that you have. It should say new scene, feel free to name it and come in here over to your sources and hit that little plus button. It says add a new source to your scene includes widgets. Wanna to hit plus, the first thing I'm gonna teach you guys how to set up is your audio. So there's two types of audio here. There's audio input capture, which you could see it's a little microphone. They make it very easy to understand here. Little microphone right there and you have audio output capture, which are your speakers or whatever audio is playing from your computer. So first things first, audio input capture for microphones. You want to go over and hit add source. And sorry, that all like it's like inception all the time here. I'm trying to like cover stuff up. Hit add source. And then if you need to add a new microphone, add new source, add source. It's, it's going, going to, to ask you to pick a device. device. You're, you're going to want to select the microphone that you're currently using. using and then hit done. I'm gonna hit cancel just because I don't want it. <laughs> so now, now you have your audio input capture. And as you can see, it's added over here. Uh, it might also say mic slash aux. As long as you can see your sound waves, that means that you're capturing. And I'm just going to delete that because I'm not too sure how those are overlaying with one another. So that's how you set up your audio input capture. 
When it comes to audio output capture, it's a little bit of the same. Hit that audio output capture button. Hit add source. If you want to listen to music on your stream, this is the way to do it. Uh, pick your speaker. I usually just leave it as default, but I do know that my audio is coming from the export of this microphone setup. So I'll select that, hit done. And bam, there you have your audio output capture and it should show up right over here as well. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how I mix those real quick. So if you see over here uh, with my audio capturing, my microphone is capturing at 0.0, .0 decibels. That means I have it all the way set to the max. I actually control my audio really mostly through my microphone and I prefer to keep this all the way up. It's just the way that my microphone is worked out. Everyone's microphone is different. But when it comes to capturing your desktop audio or your audio output device, you might want to play with the volume there. If you're playing music, I would not have it as loud as your microphone. Remember, you want it to be quieter. Uh, I usually have mine at 13. Um, if I'm really trying to talk about something, sometimes I'll lower it to 15, and then it's been as low as 18 before. But recently I've been doing it at 13, mostly because uh, when I stream, I'll oftentimes talk about the music that I'm listening to, just, just for conversation. So if you're one of those people and the music is an important part of your stream, you know, have it up a little bit higher. Right now mine is just a little bit higher because of that reason. I oftentimes talk about my music, so I've keep, I'm keeping it up there. So now that you have your audio set up, in order, we're going to go in order of importance here, obviously. So I'm going to teach you guys how to set up a uh, window capture. And before I do any of that, let me just open up uh, Clip Studio Paint here real quick. I don't want to be a knucklehead. Okay, so make sure you have open your art software of choice and there are a couple of ways to capture it and i'll teach you guys a bit about the camera in a moment as well but there are a few ways to capture your art software uh, the first one is with a display capture just like what we have set up right now i'll teach you guys how to set one up if your art is on a separate monitor as mine is right now my wacom one has its own screen it's its own monitor connected to my computer I recommend the display capture. It's just, I don't know, easier in my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to use it. This is the one that I use. Uh, you want to hit add new source, add source, and then you're going to want to come over here and keep that on automatic. <laughs> don't change that. And then select the monitor that you would like to capture. I don't know if you guys caught that because it's about to sw swap me over, obviously. Make sure that you capture that monitor okay sorry if it looks crazy it probably looks insane right now display two. select the monitor that you want bam so here I am in, in clip studio paint wow isn't that awesome okay cool let's delete that display capture <laughs> yes okay so another way to do this is to hit plus of course and go over to window capture sometimes and I don't know why, but sometimes it won't recognize it here. So if it doesn't recognize it in window capture, try game capture. They do almost the same exact things, uh, but one of them's for games. So if you don't see your software in window capture, try out game capture, but I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit of how to troubleshoot with that. So we're gonna wanna come into window capture. I already have Clip Studio Paint set up, but I'm gonna hit add a new source. And I'm going to Select the Clip Studio Paint that is not null <laughs> because that's not what I want. Uh, I would like to select Clip Studio Paint. Make sure that you're selecting your art software and click in and bam, we're back at it. So I'm just going to make this tiny. Uh, if you don't know, you can drag it around and res- oh, sorry, not that window. You could drag it around, you could resize your windows. I'm going to put it right here that way you guys could see it i think that'll uh <laughs> capture it properly <laughs> so if you're having an issue like finding it or whatever um come back in here and you can select automatic i'll uh, make sure that it says match title otherwise find window of same type uh that's just the settings that i use window title must match is another one you could do uh, 
play with them if it's not coming up. If it's really not working, swap over and try to grab that that lovely game capture if you can. But usually this works out perfectly okay. So I've just captured Clip Studio Paint here. Isn't that wonderful? So you're, you should be seeing this like on your screen. You should see your art and have Streamlabs open and that's great. Um, real quick as well. <laughs> to hide something. There's a little eyeball here. You just hit hide and it'll go away for a little bit. You can also lock things to keep them from moving around and whatnot. If you don't want anything to move or shift, just hit that little lock button. I'm gonna unlock it and I'm going to hide it for now. So that's how you set up to capture your art program. So at this point, you're pretty much ready to stream your art on Twitch. But before I do that, I just wanna teach you guys a couple of the essential widgets that I recommend using. These are widgets. Here are some of the ones that I use and that I recommend the most. First of all, alert box is labeled as essential. And I have to say, <laughs> alert box is essential. I'm going to talk a lot about customizing the alert box in another video. Uh, and that should be a ton of fun, but that's going to be way in the future. Don't worry about doing that because Twitch has you, uh, Twitch and Streamlabs have you covered, making sure that your alert box works just after hitting add source, which is awesome. So you really wanna make sure that <laughs> you add that alert box in. It's necessary for streaming nowadays. If you don't have one, people are gonna think that you're beyond um, unexperienced. So hit add source and you should see this thingy coming up and you're like, wow, where is it? Um, it's invisible until someone sends over an alert. If you would like to do a test alert, sorry, I should really explain that better. Uh, move it, first of all, move it around, put it where you want, resize it, etc. I'm gonna show you guys kind of what it looks like here as well. Double click on it if you would like to go into the settings for it and don't freak out about all the settings. Try not to panic, it's very simple. Uh, you're gonna get used to looking at stuff like this over time, it's not that crazy. These all just basically mean that you're going to get alerts for your bits, donations, merge, subs, follows, hosts, raids, super chats. Obviously some of these might not even matter to you, like for me, members, uh, we're not on YouTube so I'm not gonna need that ever. And uh, merch, I don't have any merch so... but feel free to leave them on you know if you, you don't have to flip them off if you don't have a certain thing so this is your widget editor uh set that color by the way it's kind of f f make sure that your colors are all matching up when something asks you to set a color like an accent color go in there and set it to you know whatever you're trying to theme your stuff as so you have all these different settings and just don't don't worry about too much about all this stuff right away Especially custom CSS, you're really not going to want to play with that right off the bat. Layout, I mean that's something you might want to change. This first little button here means that the text comes below the image. This is where the text strikes through the image and this is where the text goes to the right of the image. I keep mine on the first one. So let's test it out. And say someone follows me. I have these on custom, as you can see, they're anime gifs. <laughs> so I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about how to do the custom stuff later. Uh, this is just... This is, this is a text. Yeah, so a text-to-speech should also usually activates automatically. Um, all these are set up to be their own things and whatnot. This is, this a, is test a test bit alert. Bit alert. Yeah, thank you Streamlabs. So yeah, set those up if you want to. I'm gonna teach you guys about these custom gifts and stuff another time. Uh, but yeah, that's alert box. Make sure that you have your alert box set up. That's really all you need to do to set it up. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Once you add it, it should just work. It's connected to your Twitch. So it should work automatically. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to add or actually these really are just for fun, I guess. Chat box is one that people use a lot. I don't use it on everything, but you can use it. Um, if you'd like to, you just click chat box, hit add source, uh, and I'm just gonna add the one that I currently have. I'm gonna put that and just move it around, like the alert box, wherever you want it to go. When someone chats in your chat, it's going to show up here. If you double click, you could change all these visual settings for it. 
Uh, there's lots of stuff to change. Right now my background color is pink. I'm gonna reset that over to a red since once again I'm changing a lot of uh, my my art, my, uh, my theming over to that vampiric look. I did have a pink theming for a while. So yeah, this is pretty fun stuff. You can change your fonts. Uh, you can change all these different custom things. Don't touch the CSS if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but yeah, visual settings, all that stuff. Uh, themes and whatnot, you know, you could change. Whoa, look at that. Old school. Check that out. Yeah, so all this good stuff. Um, what did I have that says? Chunky? Yeah, I think I got it. It's chunky. Uh, that's just how it works out, and a lot of people use Chatbox. I don't really use it that much, but if you like it, that's how you put it. And just move it around to wherever you think it looks best. And leave it there. <laughs> the next one that I want to talk about that I kind of like is the jar. Actually, I think the jar is my favorite uh, thing on Twitch. The jar is pretty fun. I don't know why, I think it's just really quirky. It's totally like a Twitch thing. <laughs> I'm gonna add the jar and I'm gonna talk a little bit about explaining what this thing does. I'm just gonna hit add source and throw this bad boy in here. This is my jar. As you can see, it's full of little skulls. That's because those are people that have subscribed or followed to me recently. I think that, I don't know if it'll do it. If I, uh, if I run it again, will it fill the jar? I don't think so. So yeah, here you have your jar and Basically what happens is as people follow you, as they cheer, as they sub, etc. Really, before you hit affiliate, you're just getting follows and raids and hosts. All those little thingies will fill up this little jar here. And I don't know, it just looks cute and, and funny. Um, I'm probably going to make a custom one one day. And I'll definitely do that for a video where you could customize the design of the jar. Uh, come in if you double click on the jar, you could pick which one you want. Say I want to use the nice whiskey glass or something. Uh, oh, yeah, down here you could click all the things that you want to add to it, of course. Oh, I'm going to add YouTube subs. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Background color, you know, change that. I don't think I've come into these settings that often. They don't look like I've changed them that much. Uh, so, yeah, all this fun stuff. Obviously, this is a Christmas stocking and whatnot, too. Uh, feel free to go in here and just play with everything. Um, you could always just, like... <laughs> change all these different images. It's super customizable, of course, and adding your own jar image is also super doable. So, yeah, go ahead and, and play with that, and I love the jar. It's my favorite little Twitch widget of all time. I think I have it on here. I'm just going to show you guys really quickly what my uh, stream normally looks like. Not that. Here we are. This is what my stream normally looks like. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to teach you guys how to make overlays. That's in the next video. But you have everything set up now, and you're ready to go. Uh, what's next? All this stuff is all weird looking because I'm capturing my monitor. So let's go back over here. You're, I'm going to just say, you right now, if we're to go live with all these settings, it should look something like this if you have Cliff Studio Paint installed. Um, if you're going traditional, obviously, I'm sorry if I forgot to cover this before. I can't, I can't remember if I said this before, but to set up a camera, uh, come over here, video capture device, and hit add source. And hi, there's my webcam. I'm going to hit add. Use an overhead webcam. That's a whole other video is like teaching you guys how to record stuff overhead. My camera obviously is weirdly shaped. It's like square. It's it's just perfect webcam shape. So that's just the way that it looks here. I'm sorry about that. If you have a nice camera, set that up with the Elgato cam link. Grab one of those. They're not too expensive and it's definitely worth it. Uh, take your webcam, point it above your art and record. In order to go live, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about going live here on Streamlabs. It's very easy. There's a button down here that says go live. And if you hit it, you will go live. <laughs> In here, you can set all of your, your stuff for streaming. Your title, 
in the game that you're in. By the way, speaking of game, set it as art. If you're streaming art, put it as art. Make sure that you have that set and your tags. It, you can also connect to Twitter and let it tweet out that you're streaming whenever you go live. I prefer to do that manually. And I'm going to also show you guys after you hit that live button or maybe even before something that you're gonna wanna open uh, in browser. So before you hit that live button or maybe you've already hit it, you're streaming, it's your first art stream ever. I would leave open dashboard.twitch.tv and then the rest of this URL is all custom to you as a person. Uh, this is where I, I always leave this tab open to manage just about everything on my stream while I'm streaming. Uh, you got your chat over here, your activity feed, everything you could see. I always leave pro tip. If you don't want to know how many viewers you have at the moment, click it and it'll hide it. I always do that. I just don't want to know. <laughs> you could do that for all of these. If you don't want to, if you don't want to know how long you've been streaming with, I understand that too. You can hide that as well. I always hide my viewers. I just don't, don't want to know if no one's watching me. That kind of makes me sad. Uh, Twitch dashboard is a great place to go and just monitor your Twitch stream. You could also view your bit rate up here, which is super duper useful. It tells you if it's in the red, you know, you might want to fix something in your settings and whatnot. Just a great place. Your stream will play right here where you could watch to make sure that everything's going okay. When you're done streaming, you could set up for a raid. Say I want to raid any of these people here. I don't know. Uh, you could set up to raid someone and then hit start raid. Obviously, I'm not streaming, so there's no raid to be done. Uh, you could edit your stream info here. This is where I actually go to set up the name of my stream. Your go live notification gets emailed to your followers. So put something cute there. And oopsies, sorry. Put something nice there to grab the viewer's attention. Your category is art. Make sure to hit art. Audience, everyone. Uh, you probably don't have any subs if you're watching this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your your tags. Uh, a little bit of a lesson on art tags. These are pretty important. Make sure that your tags are relevant to what you're doing. Uh, five, I think, is the max that you could have. You're going to get that English creative and IRL tag automatically if you're streaming in art. Just be aware. You're going to be just floating around in IRL, whether you like it or not. Uh, stream language, set your language, it helps people from your uh, native speaking area find you and then hit done. And now you're able to just stream from here. You're able to see everything here. This is the best website to keep open while you're streaming in my opinion. So I just wanted to really quickly wrap up because this was just the, the bare bones beginner part of how to do art streaming on Twitch. And if you're watching this tutorial and you're a gamer, probably also probably even works for you. You know, this is really the beginning of how to get good at streaming art and the best ways to do it. So I'm going to dive even deeper in future videos. I wanted to start at the baseline for those of you guys that don't know much about anything about Twitch streaming and are just artists looking to get into it. Uh, I did that too with like, you know, my art class series where I'm teaching you guys art. I really started to try to start at the basics for that too. So I hope that me starting here at the basics helps even just one person. That makes me totally happy. And even if you are an experienced art streamer, maybe you learned something that you didn't know before. I don't know. But anyway, before we wrap up, I just wanted to cover a couple things to note about starting your first stream. And if you've never streamed before, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of a heart to heart about what it's like. I've been streaming art for four years. And as you probably saw, I only have 300 followers because I don't know, I try hard, I feel like, but it's really, you know, it's not easy streaming art on Twitch. It is extremely fun. And even with just the small community that I have, they all, all my viewers really matter to me because it's such a small community and it's fantastic. And I look forward to streaming every stream that I have. But when you start that first stream and you start drawing, you might find yourself, you might get lucky. And so this might not happen to you if you're lucky, but most people stream to no one for a long time. 
having no audience for months, even to years is totally normal. I don't think I got my first viewer until a year or so into streaming. A lot of that was in part because my schedule was just wildly inconsistent and eventually after a year I managed to set an okay schedule. So that's one of the things you definitely want to look forward to is making that schedule. But if no one is in your chat, if no one's viewing you, do not get discouraged. Everyone starts out with no viewers. If you have friends, family, internet people, you have an audience on Instagram, on Twitter already, it might be easier for you to get that first viewer, that first few viewers. If you already have a massive Twitter following, it might be super easy for you to get, a, get your first viewers on Twitch. If you already have an audience somewhere else, it's easier. I didn't have an audience anywhere else. So I'm small here on Twitch, I'm small on Instagram, and I'm small on Twitter. All my accounts are relatively the same size. So if you're around my size and you're just starting out on Twitch, don't worry about having no viewers for a while. But just make sure that you keep talking. I think that's super important. Talk even if no one is there. I never see, I, I can't say never, I almost never see art streamers on Twitch that succeed without talking to their chat or their audience or anything. If you don't have anyone active in chat, pretend that you're doing a podcast. <laughs> talk to yourself, talk about your art. That way when someone does show up, they find you engaging and they're interested in sticking around. Additionally, technical difficulties are going to happen when you first start streaming. You might really struggle with that bit rate and that frame rate and you might be streaming in like 140p and you're like, what the hell is going on? Um, don't worry too much about the technical difficulties in the beginning. You're going to learn and you're going to gain experience on how to fix problems like that over time. Uh, Google is your best friend. If you're struggling with something on Twitch, chances are someone's already had that issue and you can just Google it and fix it as you get more familiar with the platform and with the software that you like to use, you'll get better and better at streaming with the right settings and keeping your stream bit rate good and your frame rate and resolution good. So when you're first starting out, don't freak out. Don't get stressed out. Don't worry. It's okay. It takes time. Everyone starts at the bottom. Just by watching my tutorial, you're probably ahead of most people. I didn't watch a tutorial for my first art stream. I just threw it up there. I just said, Streamlabs, I can figure that out on my own. Actually, I think I streamed on OBS my first time I did um, an art stream. So don't worry about it. You're probably already ahead of the game, okay? <laughs> don't freak out. It's, it's just a matter of experience. You'll get the experience. And it'll take some time, but you will get there. So in my next video, Yes, because there will be more. I am going to be getting into the serious stuff that makes art streaming the best category on Twitch, dare I say. <laughs> overlays. As an artist, you can make your own overlays, even if you do traditional, um, you could probably still pull it off. Overlays are super fun and it's what you're looking at right now. This is currently an overlay that I made for my webcam and my chat turns up on the right but obviously there's no chat right now. So I will be providing you guys all the information that you guys need on making your first overlays, customizing your panels, and everything to know about branding, picking that theme, sticking to it, growing over time into your image, etc. If you don't know any of that and you're excited to learn that, please subscribe. Please put on those alerts, like this video, leave a comment if you have any questions at all. I'm telling you, I get so little comments. I will give you 100% of my attention if you ask me a question. All my attention is yours. Uh, if you need anything, do not fret to ask. And of course, if you want to watch my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash A-P-O-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E-E. -E. The link will be in the description of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys stick around for the rest of the series. I hope this wasn't too mind numbing for those of you that have already done all of this. Thank you all for sticking around. I hope you guys have a fantastic day or night. Goodbye.